Hey, welcome back to Fat Mama Physics. In this video, we are going to do a, another example involving friction force, where I do a question and you do a, another question on where I play the solutions on fast play. So let's get started with this one. A biker with her bike is traveling at 9.09 .09 meters per seconds weight this is a velocity just to note that here comes to a sudden stop in eight meters oh huh, interesting so we're kind of delving away from forces very interesting but let's see what's going on what is the coefficient of friction acting on her on the brakes okay so very different now we are kind of and uh, we are as if dealing with um kinetic uh, kinematics problems and uh, so let's take a look let's think about this a little bit so let's start with a, drawing a picture of a biker and uh, here are some forces acting on this biker we have the force due to gravity normal force and uh, the biker is already moving forward but it is seems like this person is going to come to a stop and that there is friction that, and of course, friction always acts against the direction of motion. And since the biker is moving, that seems like it's kinetic friction. But the question is just asking for coefficient of friction. Why is it not asking for kinetic friction? Uh, if you ever come across a problem like this where it doesn't specify, then you can just assume it's just some generic, generic friction and uh, two be exact in this particular case the uh, friction works uh, friction is a little bit more complex because uh, in order for this bike to by a cyclist to stop not only there has to be some sort of friction between the tires and the ground and we're kind of assuming that when she press on presses on these brakes these tires lock in motion so they don't roll anymore and once they don't roll they can exhibit sliding friction which is the friction that we've been calculating and dealing up till now as well as there's some friction probably between the axle and the tires and the rest of the bike. So there's some, there's probably a lot of friction at play. So this is a very simplified problem with what compared to what is actually happening in real life. Okay, so something to keep in mind, but let's just assume we're just dealing with plain old friction and uh, we're simplifying the problem here. In this case, we can't assume there's any forward force if a person is if any object is moving forward it doesn't mean there's an applied force so we got to be very careful about that moreover there is no pulling or pushing force if anything else doing that on the bike so um, we only have the friction force between the tires and the ground here okay so first of all let's uh, look at we need to find the coefficient of friction and uh, we're gonna deem that our axes of movement along here we're going in the direct this the forward direction is going to be positive so let's start let's deal with the horizontal forces first we have f net equals to ma and the only force acting along this line of motion is the force of friction but the friction force is acting in is acting opposite to the direction of motion so i'm gonna have to put a negative sign there and that's going to equal to our net force which is just equal to ma so let's write that down together where f force of friction is equal to our mass times acceleration and since the force of friction is acting against the person's motion it will cause the biker to decelerate to slow down to a sudden stop okay so that's what's happening here we know that the force of friction is mu times fn where mu we don't know which one it is so let's substitute the friction force in here we get we get negative mu fn equals to ma and we want to solve for mu which means we need to know the acceleration which we need to know the acceleration the mass and the normal force okay so what is the normal force normal force along is along the vertical axes and we know the biker is not jumping up and down accelerating in the vertical direction meaning fn is going to be equal to fg in this case and we know that fg is mg normal force will also be equal to mg as well here we can substitute the normal force into this equation where we get m fn equals to mg so negative m 
negative mu mg is equal to mass times the acceleration. Now let's take a look here. We, in order to get mu, we need the force, to, we need acceleration due to gravity, which we know is 9.81. We need to know the acceler or the deceleration of the bike in this case. So we need to know A. Moreover, we need to know, do we? Do we need to know the mass of the biker? Well, in the question, it's not even given to us the mass of the biker. So you might be thinking, uh, how do I solve this problem if I don't, don't know the mass of the biker? But do you see what I see? The mass is on both sides of this equation. What happens if I divide both sides of this equation by mass? <gasps> mass just goes away. Isn't that cool? that you didn't even need to know the mass of the biker to solve this problem. It doesn't happen with every case, but when it does happen, you get a nice little break, just like what you're doing, what we're doing now. So we don't need the mass of the biker. And this is the beauty of what happens when you don't substitute in all your numbers right away. Sometimes you can't even do that because you don't have the mass per se. So then going through with this, we can solve for the, uh, the mu, and we're going to do that by dividing both sides by g, or uh, sorry, the acceleration due to gravity. We know the gravity is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared. And as for the acceleration, that's something we don't have. But we can calculate this out given some of the knowns in our problem. We are given the bike biker traveling at this speed to begin with. So actually that's an uh, initial speed and then comes to a sudden stop, which we know that our final speed is zero meters per second. And this person does it over the course of eight meters. So we might know enough information to help us calculate for acceleration using basic kinematics. So let's write these down. And now we just need to figure out what acceleration is. So that's our unknown for us to be able to solve this. So let's go ahead on the side here and find our kinematics equation that we can use to solve this. And if you are thinking about this one, you are correct. Notice that the final velocity is zero. We can take that one away and we're just solving for acceleration here. So I'm gonna move the u squared to the other side. All that's left to do is dividing both sides by 2s, substituting all our numbers inside we get and putting this in our calculator we get negative 5164. We're going to save all the digits here because we need to use it in another problem. So then we can plug everything in with the acceleration on the top of, this is the deceleration of the biker actually, with the acceleration due to gravity on the bottom. We get a coefficient of a 0.526, which we are going to round to uh, two sig figs and just checking that everything just cancels out nicely We have the units of acceleration meters per second squared canceling out here and uh, Here we have a negative sign But notice we also have a negative sign that was built in our equation since the force of friction was in a backwards direction These two negative signs cancel out as well leaving us with a nice clean number with no units Which is the characteristic of a coefficient of friction so hopefully this problem taught you two things, two new things. Sometimes if you're if you're freaking out because you're not given given something in a problem, usually that means you that may cancel out in your equation once you work with your equation a little bit. And the second thing that this hopefully will show you is that sometimes you might see two step problems where in order to find the coefficient of friction here, you needed to go back and do another step of kinematics to find acceleration and substituting that in. Okay, so uh, this is getting into more rigorous problem solving, and hopefully you might be able to apply some of this in your problem down here, where it's probably also going to need a two-step solution, okay? So let's read this problem together just to make sure we have a sense of it. Uh, Miss Dawn pulls horizontally, pulls horizontally on a 5.5 kilogram sled, which is going to be our mass on an icy path using a force of 12 newtons, that's her apply force. If the sled accelerates to 0.56 meters per second, so uh, notice that this is a meters per second, this is a speed, and it uh, sounds like it's accelerating to this speed, which it's, it's telling us this is the final velocity here. 
after 0.51 seconds, that's the time, what is the coefficient of kinetic friction between a sled and the icy path? So that, so you're looking for the mu k coefficient of kinetic friction. And let's see, the problem doesn't state this, but you can assume that the a sled starts off at rest, which then tells you the initial velocity is what? Yes, it's zero meters per second, okay? So don't forget to draw a free body diagram. Good time to pause the video. And now it's my turn to go over the problem. Starting with a free body diagram, the force due to gravity acting on the sled downwards, the normal force acting upwards, the apply force towards the right, and the kinetic friction towards the left. And we're going to deem the positive direction to be forward, where F net equals to MA, and uh, the forward force FA minus a backward force, uh, force of friction, will give us this equation down below when we equate the two F net equations. The force of fr kinetic friction is equal to mu k f n where um because along the vertical direction acceleration is zero that makes a normal force equal balance with the f g so in instead we can write the force of kinetic friction as mu k f g where f g equals to m g substituting m g in there that's what we get we can also substitute this back into our original equation so we have f a is equal to in purple mu k m g equals to m a on the other side and notice not every term has m in there we cannot divide m out so we have to leave the equation as such. But now to solve for mu k, we need to isolate for it <clears throat> by putting everything on the other side of the equation. So that is fa. So let's subtract fa first to the other side of the equation. And then we are left with negative mu k mg in the the uh, the way to get rid of that negative sign to make things easier is to multiply by negative one the whole equation then the signs of all the terms can flip as a result and then dividing everything by mg puts mu k by itself so that the other side we divide by mg as well now we have everything except acceleration so to solve for acceleration we need to do a little bit of kinematics because we are given the initial velocity of zero the final velocity of 0.56 meters per seconds and the time of which that happens so that's a kinematic equation we can use to solve for acceleration since u is zero we can just get rid of that dividing both sides by t allows us to solve for acceleration and the acceleration value we get is 0. Point, sorry 1.098 meters per second square we can substitute that back into our original equation fa is 12 newtons and uh, also i forgot to multiply that by mass which i will do in a moment and um, the bottom we have m times 9.81. Oh, there you go, I fixed it, 5.5 kilograms. And after putting everything into our equation, we get 0 0.11 as a coefficient of kinetic friction. Phew, that was a very long solution. Okay, so I, I applaud you for bearing with me. And a few things that I just want to go over that might be a little bit different from what you've seen in the previous question. Number one is that in this problem, there is an applied force in the forward direction. So that also is the which leads to the object being pulled forward and a positive acceleration in the forward direction instead of decelerating in the previous question. The other thing that is different is the, since there's an applied force in this term, you cannot divide the mass out in this entire equation. Notice we try to divide the mass, sure it cancels out here, it cancels out here, but it cannot be canceled out in this term here because there's no M beside the FA. And that's okay because you are given the mass in the problem, so you don't have to stress out about not knowing the mass. The only unfortunate thing is that now you have a longer equation to deal with, but if you just follow the steps as we did in the previous problem, problem by calculating the acceleration and substituting it into this equation at the end, uh, making sure you don't forget, leave out anything, then you will come to the, uh, the correct solution there. Okay, so being consistent all the way to the end.
So thank you for bearing with me through these two problems. Good job and fantastic work on your end getting and trying to do these problems. Hopefully this will help you with the upcoming problems or give you some practice. And it's okay if we didn't, if we didn't get it, practice, ask questions, stay strong. Good luck and I will see you in the next example problem. Fat Mama Physics signing out.